Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody as we're gathered together here in our Lord's name on this uh, Holy Trinity Sunday. We have a few announcements that need to be made. Uh, first of all, Vacation Bible School is coming up here very quickly. Uh, this year we're having it from 5.45 to 8 o'clock in the evenings from Sunday through Thursday. And then from 5 to 5.45 we're going to be having a meal here at the church as well. So we have that coming forward. Also coming up, uh, we have the sign-up sheet for the Bloodmobile out in the Narthex. Uh, we only had a few people signed up. So we asked the Bloodmobile people, do we still want to continue to have it? It'll be June 1st. They said yes, but uh, push people on Sunday morning. So this is the push of you in order to try to, if you can, please sign up for the Bloodmobile on your way out this morning. Uh, also coming forward, uh, on June 28th, there's a group here from Berea that will be going down to Breakthrough Ministry that does a lot of ministry with the homeless, helps to prepare meals for them as well. Uh, we'll have more information on that as we go forward. Uh, but if you have any questions, please ask uh, Lynn Henry. She's the one that's kind of uh, coordinating this coming forward. Which also brings us up to what's going to take place this coming Sunday. So this coming, or it's coming Saturday. So we'll be having a uh, working through Second Harvest. And Breakthrough Ministries has kind of been mentoring us as we've walked through this process. Uh, we'll be having a free food distribution taking place out of here at Berea, which will be, we'll be having it on that part of the church towards the street. So Second Harvest will be bringing 10 to 12,000 pounds of food here. And then on that Sunday, or on that Saturday, I'm sorry, Saturday from 10 till noon is when we'll have the food distribution that will happen and take place. We'll be getting it ready two hours before and then clean up afterwards as well. So that'll be a really neat start of a new ministry trying to connect with the people right around us that God has put us here to be with. Are there any other announcements that I've forgotten today? I'll take that as a no. Let's take a moment and greet one another. Please rise.
Now this morning, as it is Trinity Sunday, instead of the uh, Apostles or the Nicene Creed, we'll be saying the Athanasian Creed, which is, of the three creeds, the one that tries to get the most specific about what it is that we believe about the Holy Trinity. And we'll be doing it throughout our service in three parts, and we'll kind of do it, we'll kind of, we will be doing it responsibly with one another. Whoever will be saved shall above all else hold the Catholic faith, which faith except everyone keeps whole and undefiled. Without doubt, you will perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in three persons, and three persons in one God, neither confusing the persons, nor dividing the substance. For there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Spirit. But the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit is all one. The glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, and the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, and the Holy Spirit incomprehensible. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, and the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three terms, but one eternal. As there are not three uncreated, nor three incomprehensibles, but one uncreated and one incomprehensible. So likewise the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, and the Holy Spirit Almighty. And yet there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. Our call to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity in the undivided unity. Let us give glory to Him, because He has shown His mercy to us. Ascribe to the Lord, Almighty ones. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to His name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because He has shown His mercy to us. We pray. Almighty and everlasting God, since You have given us, Your servants, grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the true unity and the power of Your divine majesty, keep us also steadfast in this true faith and worship and defend us ever from all our adversaries. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. Alleluia. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our hymn response. The Lord my God be praised.
So the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And yet they are not three gods, but one God. So likewise the Father is Lord, the Son Lord, and the Holy Spirit Lord. And yet they are not three lords, but one Lord. For as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge every person by himself to be both God and Lord, so we cannot by the Catholic faith say there are three gods or three lords. The Father is made of none, neither created nor begotten. The Son is of the Father alone, not made nor created, but begotten. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceed. So there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another, none is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal together and co-equal, so that in all things as the foresaid, the unity and Trinity, and the Trinity in unity is to be worshipped. He therefore that will be saved is compelled thus to think of the Trinity. On this Trinity Sunday, our first reading comes from Isaiah the sixth chapter. And here we have Isaiah as he's getting an image, a vision of, of the Lord while at the same time knowing his unworthiness and where his salvation comes from. So from Isaiah the sixth chapter. In the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And one of the seraphim flew to me, having his hand a burning coal, he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Acts, the second chapter. And this follows along with that reading from last Sunday on that Pentecost when we had Peter preaching and proclaiming. This is that next part in that same reading that we had last week. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it is not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning Jesus, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I might not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you have not let not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. 
You will make me full of gladness in your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and this tomb is here with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn and oath to him that he would set one of the descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned in the Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up. And of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is found according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And this is the running up. This is the whole background leading up to the end of our Gospel reading. That one that we know very well. Sometimes called the Gospel of the Nutshell. For God so loved the world that He sent His one and only Son. And whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Here, we see all of that gospel leading up straight to that verse. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless, a man, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear it sound. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you of earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe and tell you of heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. At this time, we ask that the children, the sixth grade and under, let go forward for the children's message. Today, I got a uh, book here. 
It's called the three in one. Does everybody see what's on that uh, front page there? What is that? An app. You got it. We got a story here today. So how many apples are there? One. One, one apple. So there is one apple, right? Now on the next page, what is that right there? A sun? I was told it was a ball at the first service. And so by that same thing, there's only one true God. Here, I'll get it up here for everybody, okay? Now, an apple has three parts, right? It's got that peel that's on the outside of it. It's got the flesh on the inside. And then it's got a core in the middle of it, okay? Same thing with the one true God. There are three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to get back to that apple, okay? Now here we go, the peel of the apple. Is the peel of... Here, I get up there. Is the peel of the apple an orange? No. no. Is the peel of an apple a banana? No. no. Is it still an apple? Yeah. Yes. How about the flesh part underneath the peel? Is that a pear? Yeah. It is? No. Is it a plum? No. Now what about the core of the apple? Is that a core, that center part there? Is that a grapefruit? No. A watermelon? No. But those three, the peel, the flesh, and the core, are they three apples? No. How many apples are we still at? One apple. You got it. It's the same thing when we look at God. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah! Yes. But that's not three gods. How many gods do we have? One God. You're all... Uh-oh. Yes, it did. I'll fix that in a minute. I'm going to need your help now. And we have those three parts of the apple. They've got different things, different reasons. The peel protects the apple, doesn't it? Thank you. And it keeps the apple healthy. And then you get to the flesh of the apple. Is the flesh part there good to eat? Yeah. Yes, it is. Can you think of some good apple stuff to eat? Yeah. What, not healthy? <laughs> oh, not healthy? <laughs> there we go. Excellent. There we go. Sometimes you can make an apple pie, or an apple cider, or an applesauce cake. Is that good stuff? Yeah. Yeah, that's all good stuff. And then the same thing with the core. Now the core has, what is that inside the core there? We've got seeds inside the core. You got it. And then you take a seed and you plant it. And what do you think you're going to get out of that? An apple tree. And you're going to end up with lots of apples, right? You're going to end up with many, many apples that are there. And so finally, with all of this said, we've got one God, right? So same thing, you have that apple, you've got the core, you have the flesh, and you've got the peel. Three parts, right? One apple. And God shows himself as the person of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Are there three gods? No. How many gods are there? One God. So before we continue, let's gather together for a prayer. Let's hold hands. There we go. We pray all together. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for all you've done. Dear Father, dear Father, thank you for creating. Thank you for creating. Dear Holy Spirit. Dear Holy Spirit, 
Thank you that I am your child. Thank you that I am your child. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. God the Father, 
in the top right corner where you got the hand that's there. That's the symbol throughout the history of the church of God the Father. God's hand creating, protecting, being there for us, giving us what we need. To your, well let's see your left. To your right there, you've got the Lamb of God, who's got that banner that he's holding there. The victorious Lamb of God. As he's proclaiming to us what he has won, that by what he has done, we are forgiven. Heaven is our home. And then underneath that, you then also have that Holy Spirit as a dove. Remember when Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit descended upon Christ as a dove. And if you look even closer, right under the dove, you've got three little drops of water. You'll have to look that up later. It's really hidden in the woodwork. Nobody looked at it, okay? But after the service, you can go there and you can see the three drops of water. Looking back at our baptism, we were baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And as we go throughout the summer, that's really what we're going to be looking at. Looking at what has our Lord done for us, and how would we tell other people about this as well. Because you get to that word, Trinity. And sometimes there's the argument that's brought forward, especially when someone's trying to put down the Christian faith. Well, the word Trinity, that doesn't show up until, and you don't find that word in the Bible. And is that true? If they're going to be specific, no, that word is not found in the Bible. However, it's something like this. Does a duck-billed platypus exist? Does it exist? Yeah. Did it exist before we made that word for it? Yes. Just because we came up with a word doesn't mean that we created the duck-billed platypus. That's the word Trinity. The Trinity was not found in the Bible. But the whole teaching of the Trinity, oh, that's found all throughout Scripture. All throughout the Bible. And so about the first century, I believe it was by Tertullian, came up with, there's this teaching of what is the Trinity in all, all Scripture. This is the teaching of who is God. So we need kind of a name for a handle of what does the Scripture teach us about that. So that's where that word Trinity came from. Was it made up by councils? Well, it was made up later on. But all it does is explain to us this is a name for what already exists, what's already happening and taking place. And sometimes I say, is this found in the Bible? Yes, it is. They might also say, did Jesus ever say that? Yes, he did. And what we're going to take is we're just going to take a little look here at some of the verses of Scripture that really kind of reinforce exactly what we've been talking about. What we said in the Athanasian Creed, what we've seen in the readings, what we saw with the apple, one God, yet three persons put there for us. And the first one we see here is going to 2 Corinthians, or just Colossians. Colossians 2 9. To Christ, for in him the fullness of the deity dwells bodily. And you have been filled in, who is the head of all rule and authority. To Christ. In Him the fullness of the deity. Just look at the plain words. Jesus, fullness of God, is in Christ. He is God. We get to a second one. 1 John 5.20 By the Son, Jesus Christ, He is the true God and eternal life. Can you get a whole lot more plain than that? Jesus Christ. He is true God. So you bring some of those passages forward. But sometimes the next thought is, well, yeah, but that's Paul. He's not one of the disciples. What about what, what about what Jesus said? Did Jesus ever say that this was the case? Oh, the answer is going to be yes, right? So we get to John 10, verse 30. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. That's pretty clear, isn't it? But Jesus is saying, I and the Father are one. He's still saying that there's an I and there's a Father, right? 
And yet they are one. As we're getting to the Trinity. Father and Son. One God. Then we get to the next verse. John 14. Whoever has seen me has... I'm oh, sorry, Kai. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Again, Christ going forward. And he said, you know what? The Father is in me. I and the Father are one. There we get again that reading. We get that whole idea. This is the Trinity. Three persons. One God. But then sometimes the argument starts to go on a little bit further from there. Well, okay, fine. That's what John says. You know, it always says, okay, well, let's go on a little further. Okay, well, that's what John says. Well, what about the Synoptic Gospels? What do they have to say? Oh, I added one more here. First, we get to John again. Jesus was said, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot be seen, because it either sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. We see that Spirit of of truth as well. God Himself, one God, here for us. But then we look forward at the rest of Scripture. And you know what? Even if they took all 35 chapters in the New Testament that say something very clearly about the Trinity, and if we took all of those chapters and just chucked them out, it still would point us to who is God. One God. Yet Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Maybe one easy place to look at is just that holy baptism. We're told to baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're told that is the way in order to do our baptism. Why would you baptize in those three names? You're not going to baptize in the name of God. They are one God. Even in our baptism, we see the Trinity happening and taking place. And one of my favorite stories about the Trinity is you have Christ, and He's teaching, and He's got people jam-packed around Him. And we see this in the Gospel of Mark. And there's a couple of people that are trying to bring their friend, a paralyzed man, in to see Jesus. But He's on, they're carrying Him around, so they can't get into Jesus. So they go up onto the roof of where Jesus is teaching. And they start to tear apart the roof. I always feel sorry for that whole one. I can always imagine he's there, he's listening to Jesus. They're tearing apart my roof. I gotta go fix that now. But here, they're bringing this man to Jesus. They lower him right down to him. And the first words that we hear Jesus giving this paralyzed man is not... I'm going to heal you. The first words here are, your sins are forgiven. And that gets the people around him up and up. Who can forgive sins but God? And you know what? Here, the Pharisees and Sadducees are right. Who can forgive sins but God? No. In this case, they're absolutely right. Only God can forgive sins. So what is Jesus' response there? Jesus' response is, so that everybody might know me. I say to you, get up your mat and walk. His sins are forgiven and he is healed from his sins. What is Jesus saying right there as he is forgiving this man and showing that he has the power to do this? Jesus is showing that he is God coming to this world for us. And then, of course, everybody takes the next step. Right? Well, okay, that's just that New Testament people are doing that, right? Well, that's where it's the most clear. We see it most clearly in Jesus Christ. But we also see it thanks to the Apostle John, going back all the way to Genesis. Going back to Genesis 1. We see these words. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And you remember that Trinity symbol? You got the hand, the creative hand of God. In the beginning, God, making David the Father, created the world. 
Then verse 2. The earth was without form and void, and the darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Remember from last week, the Spirit, the breath of God was hovering over the waters. Very rightly, we have the Holy Spirit there at creation. And then that third verse. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. What does John do with the same verse? He begins pointing us right here. First words of John, in the beginning. First words of Genesis, in the beginning. Accident? No. So you have those first words there of John. And John begins, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Verse 17 says, the Word is Jesus Christ. You could very rightly just swap the Word in. In the beginning was Jesus. And Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. He was with God in the beginning. Thinking again with the Trinity. Jesus was there at creation for us. So with all of that, does the Bible talk about the Trinity? Absolutely. No question. This is what the Bible teaches. And we got that nice word Trinity now as a handle of what the Bible teaches us about that. But how do we share this with somebody else? Everybody's going to be a little bit different. Maybe you might take an ample. That might work pretty well. And for some people, they'll see that and really get what's going on. But I remember when I was in Kenya sharing the faith. And I shared the faith with about 200 different uh, people of, of people that followed Islam. There. And I was bit by bit learning how to share the faith with somebody of that belief. So how do you go forward? Because they were being taught that we Christians worship multiple gods. They were taught that we worship three gods. Could you guess the three? The Father, the Son, and the Virgin Mary. That's what they were being taught that Christians worship. That those were the three gods that we worship. Holy Spirit never kind of even came across their radar. And so as I was telling with them, as I was sharing the thing, I found that really was too full in order to let them know what we believed about God. Number one, first I bridged a connection. First, you believe in one God. We believe in one God. We don't worship the Virgin Mary. We worship one God. One that has come here for us. But then it has to go on a little bit through. You can't just stop there. Because we are different religions. We are different beliefs. We are separate from one another. So where do we go from there? We have one God. And that God came into this world. With different people, you just have to share it a little bit different. And so with somebody, a, a Muslim, the way that I shared with is there was one God. And he came into this world. He came here for me. Because I look at my life and I can't get myself to heaven. I can't do enough to get myself there. And God knows it. So that's why he sent his one and only son. And that's where I can't use those words. God sent his one and only son. Is that true? Absolutely. But they would misinterpret that. So then the words that I use is, God came down and was born of Mary. And he did all of that on my behalf. And that's where the light started to click. Now did any of the Muslims suddenly go, you're right, Master, amen, I'm a Christian. That would have been nice. But it didn't happen. But I was able to share what was going on. And I was able to get over some of these misunderstandings. And I was able to at least partly help them to understand where a Christian comes from. 
And I did see several eyes start to get the idea of what is the gospel. And the gospel for a Christian is I can't. God can. And he came down here for me. Amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Now please rise as we conclude, as we say the, uh, say the common Christian faith in the words of the Athanasian Creed. Further, it is necessary to his everlasting salvation that he also believed faithfully in the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the right faith is that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God and man, God of the substance of the Father, that he got before the worlds, and man of the substance of his mother, born in the world, perfect God and perfect man, of a reasonable soul and human flesh subsisting, equal to the Father as touching his Godhead and inferior to the Father as such of his man, who, although he is God and man, yet he is not two, but one Christ, one not by conversion of the Godhead in the flesh, but by taking the man into God, one altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the reasonable soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of the Father God Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead, at whose coming all men will rise again with their bodies and will give an account of their own works. They that have done good will go to everlasting light, and they that have done evil into everlasting fire. This is the Catholic faith which, except a man believe firmly and firmly, he cannot be saved. Amen. You may be seen.
Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings, all of your gifts. We thank you, Lord, that you have revealed to us yourself that you are one God, and yet three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We praise your name for giving to us this incredible gift of knowing you. We ask that you would watch over all of the sick, all of the hurting, all who will have surgery. We especially, Lord, pray for those gathered here at Berea. Watch over Tricia, Lorraine, Delight, Marge, Gladys, Cliff, Dan, Barb, Shelley, Elaine, Phyllis, Lou, Marshall, and Ruth. And we pray for our family, our friends, our loved ones. We lift up Lord Bob, Vicki, Bob, Chad and Blaine. Bob, Melvin, Sam, Francis, Murray, Al, and James. We ask Heavenly Father that you would watch over Josh Wagner, be with him and his family, but especially be with him on his mission work in Sierra Leone. Keep him safe. Open up the doors of sharing the gospel message. And we ask that this next week you would bring him safely back here, being with his family in the Twin Cities. We ask, Lord, you would watch over us in our lives. Guide us and lead us, Lord. Be with us in this nation in which you've placed us. We also ask you might be with our elected leaders, be with our president and vice president, Congress and Supreme Court, governor and legislature. We ask, Lord, that you would grant them your wisdom and give them the strength that they might follow in accordance with your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray. In the words our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we lift up into your hands the many ministries taking place here at Berea. Especially we pray for the food distribution this coming Saturday. Bless it. And help the word to go out, that more might hear of what has happened. We ask that you be with our vacation Bible school. We ask that you might watch over all of the work that takes place through this congregation. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord let his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. We sing together our closing hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
prayers this morning. Uh, Patricia Tiaden is in our prayers, and yes, that is our uh, uh, middle child. She's having surgery coming up here on Thursday, uh, basically as a result of uh, some love. Uh, that'd be a long story, but basically she has a, uh, a hole right there, about 1.5 centimeters uh, wide, and they're going to be filling in the hole. They're going to put a, a dissolvable mesh and fill it in with an uh, artificial foam. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. 